Welcome to the Terminal Value Podcast. We have Paul Halmy with us today, and we're going to be talking about making the entrepreneurial transition. Uh, now, I understand that a lot of people listening to the podcast are in corporate careers or in other kinds of careers. And But the reason why I think an entrepreneurial transition is, is still an important topic is because if you are a value-obsessed person, which I can only assume that if you're listen to, listening to a podcast called Terminal Value, that you are a intensely value-focused person. If that's the case, then even after you have amassed significant financial resources, you are not going to be okay to just sit on your assets and watch television. You are, you are going to be personally compelled to always do something of value. So what that means is that at some point in your career, you, you, you will be transitioning to some form of entrepreneurship because uh, corporate careers all have some kind of shelf life. At some point, a corporate career ultimately comes to an end. And if you're not the kind of person who's okay to just you know, collect your retirement and watch television, then that means you are going to be having a next step. So, you might, so we might as well start unpacking what is involved in making that transition so that when the time comes, uh, you'll be ready. Uh, anyway, Paul, that was a really, really long lead in. Uh, <laughs> That's so okay. To, to tell us a little bit about your story and uh, let's kick the conversation off. Yeah, my story is similar to that, but I did it at a way earlier time frame than I would have planned on. Yeah. So uh, I got out of college and first major job was a stockbroker. Loved uh-huh. it. It was amazing. I started at the worst time possible in 2000. So anybody remembers that? That was for 9-11 and the markets crashed. And I was like, cool, I got this corporate job and now I'm going to get fired. <laughs> it's like, yeah. you know, because it was the wrong industry, but survived it, got through it, everything and, mm-hmm. and was loving that. And then just by chance, one of my best friends was like, hey, I'm, I'm going to make a run at being a UFC fighter and do all this. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. I'll help out. And so we were training, doing things like that. And yeah. he was getting really successful running the gym. And then I'd go help him with his gym. And I'm like, oh, this is kind of fun. I kind of like this entrepreneurship. This is pretty cool. Yeah. And then he ended up getting a contract with the UFC and traveled a bunch. He's like, hey, I want you to come travel with me and do this and this. And I talked to my wife. I'm like, oh, I don't know. It's like, I've got a really good corporate job. And someday I want to be an entrepreneur, but I'm kind of young. You know, at that time I was 31. I was like, I don't know if this is the right call. And then we were like, well, you know what? Let's just open a gym. Let's try it. You have two years till my licenses would expire. So I was like, okay, we'll do it. And I can always go back. Cause I'm still young. I'm only 31 yeah. around there. And then just made that move. And it was crazy. It was just, it was definitely a big step, you know, something I yeah. wanted to do later on in life. But when the opportunity came, I was like, man, like this is, this is like a once in a lifetime opportunity to go down the road of something I really want to do. Yeah. Oh, that, that, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, and so, yeah, it, it's funny when, when, when you were saying uh, stockbroker in uh, 2000, uh, the, uh, I, I'm going to show my age here, but yeah, you know, I'm, 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 I'm immediately thinking back to one of my favorite movies ever boiler room. Yep. Oh yeah. Yeah. We watch that all the time. <laughs> I'll bet. I'll bet. And my job um, was not that exciting. <laughs> <no>. <laughs> Well, that, that, that's the thing is, yes, television and movies tend to make boring things look exciting. Yeah, um, yeah we were on the phone all day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and so uh, so I think that, yeah, you know, kind of w- walk me through sort of kind of some of the things going through your mind, because, you know, as, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm a little bit of a... Um, you know, uh, of a story geek, uh, and that, you know, I'm, uh, bordering on obsessed with the idea of, you know, like Chris Vogler and the hero's journey and the hero's two journeys, right. You know, there's the journey of achievement and the journey of transformation. So it's like, say when you're going through an entrepreneurial transition, uh, so like, for example, in my case, I was terminated from my corporate job at the beginning of COVID, which sucked, uh, yeah. you know, but of course, you know, so, and of course going through that, I was like, all right, well, I can, you know, I, I can go back and find another corporate job. You know, uh, the, the thought that I had kind of my journey of, uh, of achievement, the result was I was like, well, it's going to take me three to five years to get whoever I'm working for to really trust me. In that same three to five years, I could probably figure out a way to get something going. Uh, you know, but then like that journey of transformation is where you say, okay, well, no, actually what I'm really figuring out is that to me, entrepreneurship is not just about, hey, I'm going to have a business and make money. It's about, you know, there's a group of people who you really have a calling to go serve. And if you believe that there is a that there's a that there's a group of people and what you have is genuinely valuable, then you have a moral duty to bring that out to them. Uh, and so when you look at it like that, um, you know, entrepreneurship, you know, this is going to sound hackneyed, but it kind of can <laughs> become it kind of becomes a calling. I mean, yeah. I don't know if you've experienced something different, like, or something, something different, <laughs> listen to me stepping on my own tongue, uh, something similar, but, um, uh, but, you know, I'd love to hear kind of what, you know, uh, what your experience has been. Yeah, that was definitely a thing for me when I started doing it, it was, I started running the gym is like, 
you know, you're doing it as a business and then you're looking yeah. at the bottom line, making sure you're making money, but you're actually in my industry, you're changing people's lives. It's people yeah. are coming in overweight, out of shape, high blood pressure, stressed out, you know, probably going to die in a few years, you know, and it's like, man, you got to take better care of yourself and you see them change their life and, yeah. you know, get in better shape, they're happier, they have more confidence, you know, and that helps, you know, guys in the corporate world, because then, you know, they're, their counterparts are overweight, out of shape and sad looking and they get in shape and they become more confident and they're getting promotions and they're feeling better about themselves. So mm -hmm. it's like, it's a super rewarding career. Like I, I've yeah. loved it. I've been doing it now for you know over 20 years and it's just amazing. Yeah, no, that's awesome. That is outstanding. Well, and because it was one of the things that I found too, is that, you know, like, you know, fitness and health is really important, you know, because it's like, you know, you know, cause I, I'm going on a little bit of a tangent here, so That's I'll try okay. to keep to two minutes or less. But uh, <laughs> you know, I, I always think it's funny how well, it's like you know on these fitness magazines, they'll always they'll always either show some dude or some lady who's just completely shredded. Yep. And I'm like, I go, okay, well, it's like, I go, you know, I don't need or want to be shredded. I just want to be healthy so that I can, you know, it's, you know, so that I can do things that I enjoy without having significant physical limitations, you know, or so, you know, or so that I can do the work that I enjoy and be able to concentrate for long amounts of time. Cause that's actually one of the things that I think gets overlooked a lot is that you actually need to be in pretty decent physical health in order to be able to concentrate for long amounts of time. You know, if you're in poor health, that will inhibit your ability to do high focused work. Oh yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, I was just saying hundred percent. Yeah. It's like, if you want to operate at a higher level, it's like you have to be in shape to be able to produce. Otherwise you're tired and you're over caffeinating and you're like, then you're yeah. just crashing. You're no good at home. And it's, creates like this spiral of unhealthiness. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, uh, you know, and, you know, I think that that's, you know, that's actually one of the uh, parts of, you know, we're going a little bit of a, a little bit of another direction here, kind of talking about the, the health impact of making an entrepreneurial transition. But I think it's a, you know, it's a good rabbit hole um, because, you know, I think the, you know, monitoring the health impact, your health, your fitness, and all those things while you're going through that transition is actually, I think, a lot more important than most people really understand. You know, it's a lot of people put a lot of focus on, so, okay, these are the skills I need to develop. That's important. These are, you know, I need to make sure I need to just go get contracts and get revenue. That's important. I need to actually create a, you know, make a profit. That's important. But you have to figure out how to do all this while staying both physically and emotionally fit. Otherwise, you know, you will eventually self-destruct. Oh yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. You got to take care of yourself. Cause it's and even like the corporate world too. It's like, you see people all the time. That's like, they work their butt off. They make a whole bunch of money. They have a whole bunch of money put away and then they die. Yeah. You know, just for some, you know, obviously accidents happen and things like that, but there's yeah. things you could have prevented. I mean, there's no reason to, to build your whole life, to build all these assets up just to not get to spend any of them because you didn't take care of yourself. Yeah. But right. Exactly. And, and I think that's uh uh, unfortunately, that kind of thing happens to quite a few people, uh, which is that, you know, they, you know, and of course, right, the, you know, the way the, uh, the wealth curve goes is that it skews older, just because <laughs> yeah. you have mo more time to compound assets. Yeah, it's just like, but, <laughs> yeah, but if you haven't taken care of yourself, by the time you get to where you ha actually have a significant amount of assets, uh, you could be at the point where you can't travel anymore, because it's too difficult to, to go through airports or get on planes, you know, or you could get to where, you know, you're so kind of set in a routine that dealing with how things work in like, say, Germany or France or China or wherever uh, is too disconcerting. Uh, you know, I actually know a number of people who have the financial resources to do a lot of really cool things, uh, but they're either mobility restricted or, uh, you know, or I guess I would say um, change adaptability restricted. And, you know, so what they end up doing is they end up doing a lot of things the same as they would otherwise. And their financial assets just kind of keep compounding, but they don't ever get to have any fun with them. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's definitely not what I want to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Yeah. See that, that, that thing that you just told me about. Uh, yeah. How, how about if we do the opposite of that? Yeah. hundred percent um, do the opposite, do stuff now and, but then take care of yourself because people are live every year. I forget what the stat is, but every year you live now, with science and the improvements, it adds more time to your life expectancy. We're going to see crazy changes over the next yeah. two decades of life expectancy. It's like, so if you're not taking care, you say you're imagine you're just broken down in your 60s, and all of a sudden the average life expectancy is now is 100, and you got 40 crappy years with a bunch yeah, of money, right. and you can't do anything. Sounds horrible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, yeah. Actually, yeah. I, I never kind of thought about it that way, but that's it. That's exactly it. I mean, and because 
you know, kind of going down, you know, kind of going down the path of really making sure to take care of your, you know, of your uh, physical fitness is that, you know, it, you know, there's absolutely no reason why when you're 60, 70, whatever, you know, that your physical and mental state has to deteriorate. I mean, sometimes, you know, people get diseases or whatever, yeah. but, you know, most of the reason why people become fragile as they get old is that they're, they basically let their physical condition atrophy. Yep. Uh, you know, and so, you know, uh, I'd love to hear about some of the strategies that you've seen that are effective uh, to be able to maintain that, you know, without requiring a whole bunch of time. And I, I apologize for kind of hijacking no, the, no, it's, uh, the it's purpose fun. of this episode. <laughs> um, but, uh, but, you know, because that's one of the things that I've uh, developed a little bit of fascination with is, you know, because of course, right, you know, if you're, you know, if you're willing to spend five hours a day in the gym, yes, you can be extremely yeah. fit. Yeah, um, you don't need to do uh, that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But the, you know, the, the whole question is going to be, okay, you know, how, you know, how do you effectively stay fit for, let's say, 30 minutes a day? And because I know it can be done, but the whole question is going to be, what's that strategy? I think that that's a, a different spin on the, on the question. Yeah. And, and it's something that's really simple too, when you look at it and basically the, is just be more active. Yeah. Like literally, I mean, we're in a sedentary world. It's like, we sit at our desk, we sit in our car, we do this stuff. And you just start walking. Like even example, like my mother-in-law, she's in her like mid seventies and literally she walks like four to five miles every day. Like uh-huh. a brisk, I mean, she motivates, you know, it's like, and she is constantly on the go, constantly doing things, you know, she's in her mid seventies, you know, it's, it's crazy. So I watch her. Then I see other people like in their sixties that can't do anything. They're a hundred pounds overweight. So they stop doing everything. Yeah. But it's like simple things to just start moving, just start walking, you know, and people are like, yeah. Oh, I don't want to go to a gym, but don't go to a gym. Then just start walking, yeah. do some stretching, do some mobility. And then when you do, you know, add in some, you know, resistance bands or light kettlebells yeah. or anything like that. And you can, you can cut the excuse and be like, yeah, if you did 30 minutes a day, yeah. five days a week, it'll change your life. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, and uh, you know, so like you're, you're talking about stretches, but as I think there was uh, there was one really simple form of calisthenics that I um, I ran across, uh, which is where it's just taking two, you know, two common yoga stretches, right. And uh, you know, downward dog, and then to an upward dog. Well, if you turn that into an exercise, which is where you started in downward dog pose, and then basically kind of go, you know, essentially do a push up into an upward dog. Now you do repetitions on that and you have as as ostensibly a full body workout that requires no equipment. Yeah. And you imagine the average person couldn't do that for five minutes. Yeah. That, that's anybody that's ever tried to do that. That's, that's work, but it's, it's yeah. like, but it requires nothing. And if you got good at that and you say you're in your sixties and you can do that, like I know people in their sixties and seventies that are in phenomenal shape and they, yeah. they can do stuff like that. And you're just like, man, this is motivating to me. Cause it's like, when I was younger, somebody said they're mid forties, I'm like, Oh my God, they're about dead. Now that I'm in my mid forties. I'm like, no, no, it's like, it's the new 28. <laughs> yeah. Like, right. Well, and well, listen, uh, so I remember uh, a number of years ago before my ske- our schedules just got crazy. Uh, my actually pre COVID. Yeah. Uh, my, my son and I, uh, we were at park. I took him to a parkour gym and there oh, was nice. one of the fellas who came through the parkour gym. Uh, his name is Will. And he was like 72 years old. And yeah, he was awesome. really good. Uh, and, you know, I mean, he, you know, he was, uh, I, I was always, the thing that always, amazed me was how good he was at wall climbs because wall climbs are I, I i never got that great at them you know i think the best i ever i was ever ever able to do was i think either a nine or ten foot wall you know nothing nothing that amazing uh but you know it, it just just utterly amazed me how you know it's like you know if you put like you know little kind of you know little peg things on a wall he could just basically like climb up those things like spider-man it's awesome <laughs> I mean, yeah i mean yeah, the and, human body's and, amazing we just we just stop using it we stop doing yeah. stuff and we become sedentary and then everything falls apart then. Yeah. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Wow. And uh, all right, well, l- let's get back to the actual okay. topic of this conversation <laughs> and uh, talking about making our entrepreneurial transition. So, um, so you know, wh- what are some of the learnings that you had from your trans- uh, transition, kind of some of the ahas that you, if you could go back and share them with your younger self that you'd want to do? Yeah, go definitely would go back and more planning, like having your finances in way better shape. You know, when I left, I was young, married, you know, had a baby on the way. Uh-huh. Or sorry, no, I had two kids at that time. So it was like, I would have, you know, if somebody, you know, hopefully listen to this podcast who's maybe they're in their mid forties or fifties, hopefully they've built up a, a large nest egg where they're like, oh, okay, yeah. I've got all this money invested. Now it, that takes a huge chunk of pressure off if you have something like that. So if you're transitioning out of yeah. the corporate world into being an entrepreneur, that takes a lot off where you can focus on, you know, developing the skills and not rushing, you know, taking your time, yeah. like, you know, unless something happens where you do get laid off or something happens or like COVID when, you know, everybody lost their jobs and things like that, then it's like, okay, we got to figure something out. But if you got time to plan, it's like really plan ahead, find something you're passionate about 
And then the biggest thing I would say is find something you're passionate about and don't make it about the money, which sounds completely backwards because chasing the money is the hardest thing. Like in my industry, when I went into the gyms, chasing money was tough. But if you're chasing like improving people's lives or something that you're passionate yeah. about, then the money will come if you become good at running a business. So those, those yeah. are some of the biggest things I would say. Yeah, well, and I think the, you know, and I completely agree with that, although I, I would I would articulate it from a little bit of a different angle, which is that I would say that because the thing is, that, you know, if, you know, if you need to, you know, if you need to generate money in the short term, well, in a lot of cases, what you'll do is you, you'll, you'll end up needing to not develop long-term value, you know, long-term value, long-term relationships. And I think that, you know, the, the genesis of the, you know, kind of, you know, kind of pursue what you're really passionate about and the, and the money will come the way that I see that really manifesting in a lot of cases is that when you build a community of people who are really bought into you and what you do, uh, you know, then you will be, you, you will have a lot of influence over that community. And that's the way that you will be able to generate the money by, you know, basically by bringing that, by bringing value to people who trust you, uh, you know, but of course, right, building trust takes time. And I think that's excellent advice to be able to, if you, if at all possible, come in with the financial resources so that you don't have to try to rush that process. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Don't rush it. Take the time. If you have the financial resources, especially find something you're passionate about. Cause everybody's got this, everybody listening has got this one thing that they really enjoy yeah. that's not related to work. And they're like, man, I would like to do something like that. And there's going to be a way to turn that into a business. Yes. yes. Yeah. There, there, there's a way to turn almost anything into a business. It is crazy. Yeah. There's so much opportunity out there. It's wild. We're living in a crazy yeah. and it's getting crazier. It's getting more and more opportunity with all the web 3.0 stuff happening. And it's just so much opportunity is going to, the next decade is going to be insane. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, and I, I think that's the case, that, that's the case, you know, it's like, you know, in, in, in one way, um, you know, I, I would say that, you know, in, in one way, there's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of old ways things were done that really don't work anymore. But in another way, there's, you know, every, every single day that goes by there are just untold amounts of opportunities that are being created. And in a lot of cases, people can just create their own opportunity. Um, you know, I'd say it's now is probably the easiest time ever to be able to launch and grow a business. Yeah. It's, it's a great, great time. Great opportunities. So much yeah. out there. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, uh, well, Paul, at, uh, um, Let's uh, kind of you know round us off with a couple of last nuggets of wisdom, and then make sure to let everybody know where they can uh, find out more. Uh, tell us your website and or okay. uh, if there's a newsletter that you uh, that you publish. Yeah, my favorite place right now is Instagram. I just love yeah. it's it's a way more positive place than Facebook or some of the other social media. <laughs> nice. I just like the I like the positivity of Instagram. I like the behind the scenes of stories, people that I've you know that I look up to. It's like you see behind the scenes what they're doing. So best place to find me is Instagram.com forward slash P A U L period H A L M E. Um, and always putting out good stuff on there. So I'm having a good time. Outstanding. Outstanding. Well, uh, well, Paul, really appreciate your time today. Yeah, I had a great time. Thanks for having me. I'll talk to you later. All right. Thank you for listening to the Terminal Value Podcast. Please feel free to visit me online at www.terminalvalue.biz where you can subscribe, find me on social, and then we can connect and just keep the conversation going. I'm really looking forward to hearing from you and I hope you have a wonderful day. All rights reserved. No part of this broadcast may be produced in any form by any means without written permission from Business of Life, LLC. All trademarks and brands referred to herein are the property of their respective owners.